Welcome to the Pharmaceutical Detective Podcast, your source for exciting investigations into historical scandals and intrigue in the world of pharmaceuticals. Each episode of this podcast is a fascinating dive into real-life events that impacted healthcare and society. We aim to shed light on the most significant episodes in pharmaceutical history, revealing their impact and consequences. Our investigations are based solely on open sources, and we bring you the most important and interesting from a sea of information. You may be asking, why should we study past scandals when they have been around for a long time? We believe that understanding the past will help us better understand today's challenges and issues in the pharmaceutical industry. Looking critically at past events allows us to identify practices that may still be relevant today. Please keep in mind that mentioning companies or drugs in our podcast is not an accusation of wrongdoing or crime. We only provide facts based on open sources, and we reserve the right to your own opinion. Get ready for an exciting journey into the history of the pharmaceutical industry, subscribe to our podcast and stay up to date with the most interesting revelations and investigations. The Hunt for Answers Investigating the Thalidomide Crisis Welcome listeners, to the first episode of the Pharmaceutical Detective Podcast. Today we'll be unraveling one of the biggest medical mysteries of the 20th century, the thalidomide tragedy of the late 1950s and early 1960s. In the late 1950s, a new drug called thalidomide hit the market with promises to be a safe treatment for morning sickness in pregnant women. However, reports soon started emerging of babies being born with horrifying birth defects, missing or flipper-like limbs. Doctors were baffled. What could have possibly caused these abnormalities? Over the next few years, thousands of affected children were discovered all over the world. A panic ensued as researchers raced to understand what was causing these rare defects and trace it back to its source. It would take meticulous scientific sleuthing to crack the case. As pharmaceutical detectives, we will pore over old medical journals and case reports to follow the clues and evidence as experts work to identify the cause. Join me as we travel back in time to review each new breakthrough and piece of the puzzle that was uncovered. Listen along as the mystery slowly unravels before us. Our mission is to solve one of medicine's greatest whodunits. Just what was this mysterious substance thalidomide, and how did it cause such profound birth defects? Let the investigation begin. Unraveling the mystery, the Fosmelia epidemic and the search for answers. The first signs that something was terribly wrong began emerging in medical journals in late 1961. German physicians published several reports detailing incredibly rare birth defects they were witnessing in newborns. Babies were being born missing arms or legs, or in even rarer cases, possessing stumps resembling flippers in place of arms and legs. These defects, termed Fosmelia, from the Greek terms for seal, and limb, had never been seen so frequently or concentrated in one place before. Something seemed to be triggering a surge of these anomalies amongst infants in Germany. Across the world, similar reports soon followed from doctors in Australia who recognized the same pattern of defects appearing in their newborn patients. Naturally, the medical community was baffled. Fosmelia was exceedingly uncommon and usually occurred randomly due to genetic disorders or unknown factors. To see clusters of cases all occurring within months of each other went against all previous understandings of teratology, the study of birth defects. Faced with injured babies and distraught families demanding answers, doctors were left scratching their heads as to the cause. A thorough epidemiological investigation was launched to try and deduce the elusive cause. Doctors compiled detailed histories of the affected mother's pregnancies hoping for clues. What food, work conditions, medications or other exposures had these women shared that healthy mothers had not? This marked the start of scientists' global search to solve the mystery of the Fosmelia epidemic and identify its still unknown trigger. From wonder to woe, the rise and fall of thalidomide. The missing piece in solving this public health mystery turned out to be a newly popular drug, thalidomide. Developed by German pharmaceutical company Chemi Grunenthal, thalidomide had first reached European markets in 1957. It was marketed as a wonder drug, a safe sedative that could also relieve morning sickness associated with early pregnancy. 
Grunenthal aggressively touted thalidomide as completely harmless, even directing marketing at obstetricians. They assured doctors and patients it had no risk of fetal damage. With no known alternative, thalidomide became tremendously popular among expectant mothers suffering from debilitating nausea. It was eventually distributed in 46 other countries under various trade names. As the number of Fosmelia cases grew, doctors started seeing a pattern. The only common exposure among the victims' mothers was thalidomide use early in pregnancy. By mid-1961, this link could no longer be ignored. Australian physician William McBride published a report associating 17 babies' birth defects to mothers' ingestion of the drug during pregnancy. McBride's findings triggered other physicians to examine their own cases. Reports soon flooded in from Germany, Britain, Canada, and elsewhere describing over 2,000 children born with detrimental defects after their mothers took thalidomide. Most had never ingested thalidomide themselves but were exposed in utero, with resulting blindness, missing limbs, and internal organ damage. The birth defect rate was over 40 times higher than normal. Scientists realized they had discovered the cause of this medical catastrophe. After decades of safe use, thalidomide had emerged as an unanticipated human teratogen. McBride's discovery, unraveling thalidomide secrets. A major breakthrough in the investigation came from animal studies conducted in 1961. Australian physician W.G. McBride reasoned that if thalidomide caused defects in humans, it should also affect rabbit embryos similarly. He administered the drug to pregnant rabbits and carefully examined the litters at birth. McBride's chilling results, published in The Lancet, were definitive scientific proof that thalidomide was the cause. Infants born to rabbits dosed with thalidomide displayed the dreaded flipper deformities resembling human phosmelia. This was the critical piece of evidence that thalidomide could directly harm the developmental process in utero. Coming just months after field reports first linked the drug to human birth defects, McBride's study was groundbreaking. It represented the first experimental demonstration that thalidomide qualified as a human teratogen, capable of disturbing the intricate growth of limbs and organs in immature organisms. The significance of this rabbit study cannot be overstated, as it verified the association beyond any doubt. Further, it highlighted the irreplaceable role of good preclinical testing using animal models. These trials involving lower species are essential for screening new substances and weeding out potential poisons before human pregnancies could be jeopardized. Had thalidomide undergone rigorous testing earlier, the harm it unleashed may have been avoided. Cracking the code, Hiramitsu's discovery of thalidomide's Achilles heel. In their relentless pursuit of answers, scientists continued probing how exactly thalidomide disrupted the complex process of embryonic development. A major breakthrough came in 1965 through groundbreaking work led by Japanese scientist S. Hiramitsu. Through meticulous experiments on thousands of chick embryos, Hiramitsu discovered that thalidomide actively impaired the growth of new blood vessels, a vital trait known as angiogenesis. During gestation, Angiogenesis is necessary for limbs to develop adequate blood flow and receive proper oxygen, nutrients as cartilaginous molds elongate into bones. Hiramitsu found that in thalidomide-exposed embryos, this process of angiogenesis within the developing limbs was severely hampered. With limited vessel formation and circulatory support, the limb buds simply could not grow to full size. Instead, they truncated into stumps resembling phosmelia. By classifying thalidomide as an anti-angiogenic, compound, scientists gained keen insight into why its brand of teratogenicity uniquely caused phosmelia rather than a random assortment of defects. By selectively targeting the angiogenesis required during a critical gestational time window, it disrupted the most ambitious phase of limb development. Hiramitsu's pioneering work explained thalidomide's chilling mechanism of action and provided a framework for predicting other drugs' teratogenic potential based on their angiogenic properties. His findings stand as a watershed moment in understanding chemical interference with embryogenesis. Lessons learned. The thalidomide disaster and the evolution of drug safety. The full scope of harm from thalidomide was astonishing. It's estimated that at least 10,000 children in 46 countries were born with thalidomide-induced defects. 
the tragedy was a global catastrophe unseen since the 1918 influenza pandemic. The thalidomide incident exposed the need for urgent reforms in pharmaceutical testing and regulation. It became clear that drugs must be thoroughly screened for developmental toxicity before being studied in humans or marketed as safe for pregnant women. Policymakers took action to prevent future such disasters. New laws were passed requiring rigorous preclinical animal trials to detect any hint of teratogenic activity before trials involving pregnant patients. Strict protocols for informed consent and caution in pregnant consumers were enacted. Additional oversight and accountability were imposed on the drug approval process. Although it caused immense suffering, the thalidomide crisis triggered positive change that improved consumer protections. Decades later, under new regulations, scientists discovered thalidomide's miraculous uses with careful planning, helping transform regulations to both promote medical innovation and public well-being. The lessons of this forensic case altered drug development forever. Seeking truth, ensuring safety. I want to thank all of you for joining me on this journey back in time to solve the thalidomide mystery. It was a long and painstaking investigative process, but one that yielded invaluable lessons that changed the course of medicine. While we'll never forget the thousands of lives forever impacted by thalidomide, something positive did come from this tragedy, reforms that better protect future generations. Events like this tragedy underscore the grave responsibility we hold in developing new medical treatments. As scientists, we must thoughtfully consider all potential consequences, whether intended or not, when bringing therapies from the laboratory to actual patients. Thalidomide is a stark example of why rigorous preclinical testing remains so important. In future episodes, we will explore other medical mysteries and controversies from history that pushed safety and ethics forward. From unexpected vaccine side effects to failed drug trials that went disastrously wrong, each case contains clues that deepen our understanding and strengthen safeguards. I hope you'll tune in to hear these stories of forensic research overcoming obstacles to find truth and progress cures in a manner protecting people above all else. Thank you for being part of this journey.